Lieutenant Monica Rambeau of New Orleans Harbor Patrol was a strong-minded and a hard-working officer who felt her goal to become captain was intentionally being hindered by the harbor master because she was a woman. However, in the harbor master's defense, he felt Rambeau's performance was contrary to what was expected. So not long after, she would be approached by her grandfather's old friend, physics professor Andre Leclerc, who needed her to help him stop his former employer, a South American dictator, from using his blueprint invention that could draw unstable energy from other dimensions as a weapon of mass destruction. So Monica agreed, and the next day on her day off, they made their way to the oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico, where the project was secretly being carried out. So with a little persuasion, as she improvised her way aboard the heavily guarded and unusually clean oil rig, her cover would eventually be blown when the professor triggered the intruder alarm, attempting to disable the energy disruptor machine. And when the professor's rogue assistant decided to do a test run with the machine by first wiping out the state of Georgia, Monica would spring into action, attacking him, and next forcefully attempted to destroy the machine with her bare hands that surprisingly caused it to explode. After silicone grid splintered and circuits crossed and melt, causing Monica to instantly shoot across the clear blue skies like a streak of energy, all the way to the waterfront in New Orleans. Now dizzy and confused, she searched desperately for help when she suddenly faced through the door of the warehouse on the dock and eventually found something to wear in the storage room in the form of a combination of different leftover Mardi Gras festival costumes to keep herself warm from the draft while using the mask to conceal her identity from the embarrassment. Then not long after, unintentionally shot back to the oil rig, just by thinking of the professor's safety there, which she would find a place in ruins, with extra dimensional energy shooting from it, causing the walls between universes to start breaking down. Nevertheless, Monica would go on to save the professor and stop the universe from ending by chance, when her body began to absorb the excess energy and sealing the dimensional hole shut. Two days later with barely no sleep, Monica will finally get her diagnosis from the professor, revealing she now had the power to transform into any form of energy within the electromagnetic spectrum, along with having hypercosmic awareness and immortality. So he next gets to her an upgraded version of her costume that was composed of unstable molecules. So her power doesn't destroy her clothes, since he wanted her to take up the superhero mantle, as what the media would dub her Captain Marvel, before she went on to quit her job. A few short weeks later, and Monica would be in New York City, strolling on the wrong side of town, only to get mugged by two criminals. However, unfortunately for the muggers, Monica was a trained combatant and knew how to deliver chin checks and eye swolls to the would-be assailants. As she only came to the Big Apple to get help from a high-powered superhero scientist that could release the excess extra-dimensional energy that was building up inside her before she explodes like a 1,000 megaton bomb. So with 12 feet of high induction flex cable wire wrapped around her while Iron Man overrides his armor's micro circuit breakers to handle her power and Spider-Man's webbing used as a non-conductor, they were able to release a devastating force of energy through Iron Man's repulsor ray gauntlets. While, while thereafter, go on to introduce her to the rest of the Avengers and the Avengers Mansion. Now a Avenger in training, all thanks to their leader, Janet Van Dyne, aka Waz, Monica, who is now going by Captain Marvel, We'll go on to learn about the original Captain Marvel, Marvel, the half Cree alien superhero that died from a cancerous disease to the lungs called Blacken, as well as further her training in combat with Captain America and still have time to travel back to her home in New Orleans at the speed of light, as if it were next door to the Avengers Mansion. Moreover, after a couple of successful missions with her team, she and her team will meet Thanos' young brother, Arrows of Titan, who wanted to join their roster, which he would be eventually accepted while giving a name change to Star Fox by Janet. Furthermore, Captain Marvel would ask Star Fox about the original Captain Marvel since they were good friends. However, Star Fox's response would leave her thinking he didn't believe she was worthy of the title. Succeeding this, Captain Marvel, with the direction of Star Fox, would be a crucial part in defeating the ruler of the negative zone, Annihilus, by disrupting his expanded impenetrable null field that threatened to destroy the universe until she took it down after turning into a gamma ray laser beam and he was inevitably sent back to the negative zone. Also, Captain Marvel would help Hannibal King, Doctor Strange, and Scarlet Witch defeat Dracula, who was after the powerful Dark Hold book. Then after, Captain Marvel and Scarlet Witch would build a close relationship with one another, along with her and She-Hulk. While back in her personal life in New Orleans, Monica's long-planned financial transaction would be completed 
after she took out a business loan at her local bank. Later, during a fight where the Avengers would go against the Masters of Evil, Captain Marvel would find out her powers were useless against the supervillain Marcus Daniels, aka Blackout, when he entrapped her in a Dark Force energy ball, which would later bother her, as she tried to find a way to counter it in the future. Moreover, Monica revealed to her parents, Fire Chief Frank Ramboa and Seamstress Maria Ramboa that she was a superhero known as Captain Marvel of the Avengers, which they would surprisingly be okay with it, thus approving her new position in society. While next, over dinner, she made it known that she was starting a business and wanted her father to join her as a business partner. Furthermore, the Vision would deceptively send Captain Marvel seven light hours away into outer space to investigate an abandoned starship that he claimed produced a signal, which she would find it was Thanos Sanctuary 2 command ship, drifting just beyond the edge of the solar system for months. Before she was captured by Nebula's mercenary force hidden aboard, after they neutralized her powers for several minutes, when they activated the ship's hyperspace drive, disrupting it, and took her somewhere in the Andromeda galaxy, where she wouldn't know how to get back home if she tried to escape. In their attempts to force her to join them, and taking the rest of the Skrull Empire that was attacked by Galactus, so Captain Marvel played along, only to forcefully hijack a Skrull starship and use its communication device to contact the Avengers. Shockingly thereafter, Nebula, fired an anti-matter torpedo to obliterate Captain Marvel in the Skrull Armada after she took out their defense system. Nonetheless, Captain Marvel would save the Skrulls as they warped away into subspace when they next encountered her rescue party, the Avengers, who came for her while thereafter had no choice but to join forces with the Skrulls in order to stop Nebula and her fleet from causing chaos across the galaxy. Furthermore, when Hercules and Namor joined the Avengers team, Captain Marvel would be the one to always stop the two big egos and their love-hate relationship from clashing over everything that was big or small. Meanwhile, she would meet a love interest in the form of FBI agent Derek Freeman. Moreover, when the Avengers took on Kane the Conqueror, he would also use Dark Force energy to subdue her, which would be the last straw. So she later asked new Avengers member Dane Whitman, aka Black Knight, if he could help her bypass that weakness which she would by guiding her on transforming herself into a massless particle called Neutrinos. And ironically, the day would come when she encountered her old foe, Blackout, who she would knock unconscious and then chase after Moonstone, who would be so overwhelmed by Captain Marvel's power that she panicked and accidentally crashed into the side of a cliff at almost 100 miles an hour, breaking her neck thinking Captain Marvel was going to kill her. Succeeding this, the Wasp would step down as leader of the Avengers while the British sorcerer Dr. Anthony Druid would be welcomed as a new member of the team and Captain Marvel would be nominated as the new leader of the Avengers after proving herself to have integrity, confidence, empathy, and great communication skills after countless missions on the team. And after countless missions as leader, which included taking on the X-Men led by their current leader Aurora Monroe aka Storm along with the Soviet super soldiers who also won the fugitive mutant Magneto that was currently in the Avengers custody caused an all out epic brawl for the ages that would eventually lead to Magneto facing a criminal trial where he would be unexpectedly freed for the lack of jurisdiction the court had over him. Also, our heroes would next defeat Hades aka Pluto and his unliving legion in the netherworld. Then right after, fought the Greek god Zeus, his daughter Artemis, sons Apollo, Dionysus and Ares in the biggest battle of their life all because the gods of Olympus thought the Avengers were responsible for Hercules' comatose state before he was revived by Prometheus and revealed the masters of evil were responsible. Moreover, Captain Marvel powers would start giving her issues with its stability. However, her bravery when she was not physically up for certain tasks but unwilling to use weakness as an excuse proved she possessed the qualities of leadership, although she had doubt. And to make matters worse, the arrogant Dr. Druid secretly harbored resentment for Captain Marvel's position as leader. Subsequently, when Neymar's wife, Marina, began to transform into a rampaging leviathan, Captain Marvel and Thor used the combined forces of electricity to subdue her, causing Captain Marvel to completely disappear after vaporizing trillions of tons of the Atlantic Ocean. Luckily, nevertheless, she would suddenly appear hours later at the Avengers HQ. Unfortunately, in the final stages of exhaustion, as she dissipated much of her body mass. So Thor then rushed her to the hospital. Soon after, Monica's parents would show up to be at their daughter's bedside, being glad their only child was still alive. 
Surprisingly and shockingly enough, Dr. Druid was manipulated by a technology that allowed Ravana, a female Kane the Conqueror, he was in cahoots with, to project herself as a vision and cause Dr. Druid to use his psychic powers in order to influence Monica and in choosing him as her replacement as leader and also cause the present Avenger members to agree to the decision before Monica's parents flew her back home to New Orleans. A great amount of time would pass when one day Captain America assembled the Avengers and surprisingly Monica would show up with her remarkable resilience to offer her service in any capacity. And when she did eventually recover, Monica lost her powers but still managed to stride on by working at her new job as captain on a cargo ship where her powers would eventually manifest when the ship was under attack by criminals led by the mercenary Frank Scarini, aka Powder Keg, who sweats explosive nitroglycerin-like compounds and was hired to steal high-tech Stark circuitry that was aboard the ship. However, Monica's powers would now be altered and working in an inverted way, while also giving her great durability and strength, but not being as powerful as she was before. Anyhow, she would encounter Moonstone once more, who was another hired criminal to retrieve the Stark circuitry, and after a battle that took longer than usual, Captain Marvel would defeat her. Then right after, be confronted by the Brazilian crime lord, Christina Ramos, who hired the goons so she could add the circuitry to her guardsmen armor. So after Captain Marvel's friend, Ron Morgan, and Lieutenant James Rhodey Rhodes gave her a device that would disable the guardsmen armor, Christina Ramos would be quickly defeated after. Moreover, Captain Marvel would now be a reserve member of the Avengers, and one day sent into outer space with fellow members during the Kree and Shi'ar War where she would lead the Shi'ar team in preventing them from destabilizing Earth's sun with their conflict, as she fought alongside Carol Danvers, who was going by Binary. Furthermore, Captain Marvel would next meet Marvel's son, Guinness Vale, and relinquish her mantle of Captain Marvel to now be calling herself Photon, while after finally got her original powers back and getting her charter fishing boat business going, co-owned with her father, who is now retired from the fire department. Nevertheless, she would lead another variation of the Avengers again to victory. When Drax the Destroyer's daughter, Moon Dragon, linked the team through Quasar's quantum bands to stop the higher dimensional entities known as the Infinites from making a single reality at the cost of trillions of lives being slain. So our heroes had to convince him on why what he was doing was morally wrong, which they would inevitably get their point across. Succeeding this, in an odd turn of events, Guinness Veil would start calling himself Photon until it was revealed to him by the media that that was Monica's superhero name. So Guinness Vale decided to clear up the confusion and the act of possibly trolling Monica. So him and Monica would next make their way to a bar where they would brainstorm for different aliases until Monica decided she would now call herself Pulsar. Following this, during the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, Monica and her father would use their boat to search for survivors and her aunt, which they would locate her and her husband who was also armed with a gun hiding in fear for their lives, claiming vampires were ravaging the area. Unsurprisingly enough, Monica and her father were skeptical about the outlandish claims and went on to rescue victims who were stranded on their rooftops when suddenly King T'Challa aka the Black Panther appeared, needing the assistance of Monica, who no longer wanted to use a nickname. So the Black Panther confirmed the claims of vampires and reminded Monica that she was a goddess and needed to start acting like one. So Monica went on to help Black Panther, Blade, Brother Voodoo, and the people of Louisiana with their vampire infestation by vaporizing them out of existence. And then our heroes began to search for human survivors. While after, Monica and Jericho Drum, aka Brother Voodoo, started to have an attraction for one another, which would lead to a one night stand and another two more rounds before Monica fled from the burden of commitment. However, Brother Voodoo was ready to show his devotion to her, even going to the extreme by sending a zombie to deliver bouquets. So she decided to meet him at the Voodoo Lounge in Harlem, where they would share a lovely dance and end it with a kiss before they headed home for round three, just before they teamed up on a mission to retrieve the occult artifact from New Orleans. Not to mention, Monica and her ragtag team of obscure but effective members were a part of the highest anti-terrorism effort known as HATE, ran by the eccentric director, Dirk Anger, who formed and employed them as an elite anti-terrorism team called the Next Wave Squad until they went rogue after finding out the Evil Beyond Corporation gave hate resources to product test unusual weapons of mass destruction on the American people for exchange of payment and political power. So Next Wave 
followed the Beyond Corporation's marketing plan closely and their attempts to sabotage their weapon testing and stop Hate's armorer and benefactor as they dug up the alien dragon called Fin Fang Foom to cause mass destruction upon the population, which our heroes would defeat along with Beyond Corporation's humanoid plant-based robots that lack organs in most of their brains. And then after, a corrupt police officer whose body was invaded by a strange parasite cat-like creature, giving him super strength and size, while causing the cop host to eat anything that's made of flesh to feed it. What's more, Next Wave will destroy the Beyond Corporation's war garden, where they grew the humanoids, while being attacked by hate. And in additionally, take down a monstrous race of 200 of its mindless slaves, from the dread dimensions called the Mindless Ones. And lastly, head to State 51, the Beyond Corporation's floating terror factory and finally take out the super terrorists who tried to subvert Next Wave's massive anti-terror operation to attack Americans. Now that her Next Wave team was disbanded after their mission was completed, Monica would find herself being invited to the wedding of the century when King T'Challa married Aurora Monroe. And then following this, during the events of the superhuman civil war, she would join Captain America's secret Avengers against the Superhuman Registration Act. Henceforth, why the Black Panther would recruit Monica as part of his superpower team to a speedy resolution to the registration crisis. Surprisingly, Monica revealed she had intimate feelings for T'Challa and also wanted him to teach her how to use the full potential of her powers, which he would by guiding her on breaking into Iron Man's negative zone prison known as 42 to help free prisoners who weren't registered. Sometime after, Carol Danvers, who was now going by Captain Marvel, would help Monica search for six boats and their passengers that mysteriously vanished under the sea in the Gulf of Mexico, coming out of New Orleans in the last three months, as Monica playfully gave Carol a hard time about her taking up the Captain Marvel title, which she first found out when it popped up on her Google alert, which Monica also admitted she has post-traumatic stress from going into the sea after what happened to her a while back. Anyhow, Carol would discover an underwater graveyard of missing ships and planes from different time periods deep beneath the sea. When they next encountered what was responsible, a giant mech that began to unleash his global battle mega action attack in a tense but epic clash, where our heroes would tag team double team against the massive combatant, causing Monica to overcome her fears of the deep blue and then let Carol absorb her to amp up her powers and release a devastating electric blast that would destroy the giant bot thus causing our heroes to save the day once again. Monica would at one point be summoned to Wakanda to help take on the psychopath killer only known as Eric Killmonger and his legion of followers who kidnapped Princess Shuri in his attempts to take over the kingdom with the backing of the US government. Nonetheless, Monica would make her presence felt as she came to the aid of the Wakandan people, which the King Gloria advisor Zuri and a soldier felt she should have been T'Challa's wife before she went on to save the king by hitting Killmonger with a deadly blow to the chest as his son grieved over it, vowing vengeance for the death of his father, holding the king solely responsible for it. A time will pass when the day the Mad Titan, Thanos, returned to Earth's vicinity to unleash his Black Order member Proxima Midnight to wreak havoc on the metropolitan area of New York. Meanwhile, Monica, who was surprisingly now going by the superhero name Spectrum, was chasing down the criminal speedster called Blue Streak before rapidly ending his crime spree and turning him over to authorities. While next, Spectrum joined forces with other heroes as the mighty Avengers to take on Proxima Midnight and her minions in a heroic battle to stop the alien invasion on New York. When suddenly, she was hit through the back by Proxima Midnight's spear that operates as a star, supernova, and black hole all at once. But luckily, she was later cured by the arriving Dr. Adam Brashear, aka Blue Marvel, who detected her photons were being eaten. So he painfully boosted her photons, which put her back in the game, as she went on to pierce through the eye and kill the ruler of hundreds of dimensions, Shumagur, as our heroes once again triumph over evil and let know justice will always prevail. Following this, Spectrum, alongside She-Hulk, will be seen training the chi wielder Victor Alvarez, aka the new Power Man as a member of the mighty Avengers. Not long after, she would accompany She-Hulk, Blue Marvel, and his son Max to try and save his eldest son, Kevin, from the neutral zone. However, he became a ticking time bomb when he emerged hideously enlarged and distorted. So Spectrum decided to stop his re-entry by boosting She-Hulk's power by turning into gamma radiation and letting She-Hulk absorb her. 
which in turn maximized She-Hulk and turned her into a raging, enhanced, unstoppable force of nature, knocking Kevin back within the neutral zone, thus preventing a disaster of unknown proportion from happening. Succeeding this, Spectrum will find out that Beyond Corporation had resurfaced after she was made to believe her adventures with her next wave squad were just false memories that never actually happened. So she went on to take down the reality warping Omni being from outside reality who was responsible and next sent back to his dimension with the help of the reformed Kevin who briefly emerged once again and returned back to the neutral zone. Furthermore, Monica who was still going by her codename Spectrum was now a member of the new Ultimates who dealt with threats at a cosmic level and all disturbances in the universe before they could become a problem. One being changing the nature of the devoured worlds known as Galactus by using a reality warping substance called ISO-8 turning him into the life bringer, seeder of new planets as well as defeating the eternal deviant hybrid Thanos himself in a legendary battle to protect the universe and then later capture the ghost of the deceased cosmic single entity across the entire multiverse, the living tribunal. Then after, Barstival, the servant of cosmic evil, when our newly formed love couple, Monica, fused herself with the living stable antimatter reactor known as Blue Marvel, hitting it with a crucial blow. And then lastly, an alternate version of Reed Richards known as The Maker, which would go on to cause the chain of events that saved the multiverse. That being said, Monica Rambeau is Marvel Comics' beautiful sun goddess.